before we get started, I just want to remind you, wear a good quality dust mask when working with PVC. I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you. The Native American flute has become very popular and if you've looked around you can you found that the quality varies and the cost varies too. But if you're handy with tools and all, all it takes is a piece of plastic PVC, a little time and you got yourself a really nice instrument. Very cheaply and very quickly and we're going to show you today how to make F sharp which is the most popular key in the Native American flute in PVC. Very simple, very quick and easy to do at home. Okay, so for an F-sharp flute, we're going to cut a piece of PVC pipe. This is just standard PVC. It's three-quarter inch diameter. We're going to cut 55 centimeters length off of the end for an F-sharp. So you measure 55. And then with a saw. I cut away. Okay, first we're going to make the sound hole and the air hole and put the block in to separate the air chamber from the sound chamber. So let's do that now. A simple thing, you want to make sure that all the holes line up when you drill them so you don't have finger holes off to the side or underneath or, every, or something like that and you want the sound and air hole to line up straight so you'll get a good sound. So the best way to do that is to put a straight edge along the flute barrel like this and, uh, and draw a straight line from end to end. And that will be your guideline for a hole placement. The next step to mark placement using um, your ruler, you can mark placement for the sound hole, or I'm sorry, the air hole and the sound hole, and then for all the finger holes, marking them as such all the way down. And then you're ready, and you'll come out with something looking like this. With everything marked and ready to go. Now, have you seen I've measured um, for, the two, for the two holes. This is a sound hole, and this will be the air hole, air chamber, sound chamber. Now I'm going to drill these holes. You know, you can do as I'm going to do. I'm going to use a Dremel tool, which is quick, fast, clean, and easy or you can use a hand drill or a power drill. However, if you're going to make with a different kind of material such as wood or bamboo, a drill, a standard hand drill or power drill is probably going to cause problems. The best tool for that will be your Dremel. So let's uh, drill these holes. Don't make these holes too large to begin with. Okay, you got two holes in there, about an eighth of an inch in diameter. We're going to enlarge those and square them up 
to where they are about a quarter of an inch. And to do that, we're going to use needle files. And this is the tedious part of making a flute. Okay, once you've got uh, the sound or fipple hole squared, you'll want to angle the front part, the part that's closest to the foot of the flute, you'll want to angle it just a little bit at approximately 45 degree angle. This will split the air and create the sound as the air is blown across this. So, okay, that looks good. And give it, you know, eyeball it, make sure that it is even and not lopsided either way because that will not deliver a good clear note. All right, now, next, as you can see, the flute is all the way through. What we have to do now is put the block in, and for that, we're going to use a stopper from one of my favorite beverages, uh, wine. <laughs> And let me get one out here. Just to do a quick measure here. Oh, uh, as uh, also, the air hole does not need to be square. Round is fine. So just make it round, approximately a, a quarter inch diameter. Clean that up and you'll be able to see that better. And that will be the air supply hole, and this is your sound hole, and it does need to be square. Okay, so we'll measure the length that we need between to, to block and uh, mark that. And then we'll saw that bit off. You could probably just use a knife and cut it. But this is the manly way. <laughs> Speaking of manly and everything, uh, there's a myth uh, that the flute itself is a man's instrument. It's best known as a love flute. Well, in tradition and in history, it is not a man's flute. Yes, it was used in courting ritual, but it was also used much more widely as just an instrument for entertainment and an instrument for um, the planting and harvest seasons. Uh, and women played the flute just as much or as or more than men. So next time some guy tells you, oh, it's a man's flute, mm, it's man's instrument. And no, it's not. It's for everybody. What I'm doing here is just uh, smoothing off the sides of the cork. Then take the cork and carefully Insert it into the end there and use one of your needle files to just push it down and you can eyeball through the sound and air holes when it gets there and just as it gets past, and there you go. Once you get the air hole and sound hole drilled, you need to determine what kind of fetish or bird that you want to have. For PVC, if you want a really sleek looking flute that has no considerable bumps on the end and everything, you can make a slide on fetish or bird using a PVC connector for the three quarter inch pipe. With the connector, connectors look like this when you buy them. They're long and they have a lip inside for two pipes to join against each other once connected. Well, you don't need a connector that that's that long. So, where the joint is inside, where the lip is inside, cut the connector in half. Then with a needle file, file that lip 
or the remainder of the lips, if there is any, completely flat with the inside of the connector. Then take that and, and cut, just cut a, a slit in the connector so it can move well and slide on easily on the end of the flute. Now, if you decide that this is the type that you want, this is a very rough shaped flute. You need to do this. As you can see, the uh, nest area here has been filed down and flattened, but at the back of the air hole, it is still high. That's so air does not escape backward toward you as you blow through. However, it's flat here and the air will be directed from there, under there, to go across the sound hole just like a standard fetish directs air through the channel. However, the channel for this is created simply by the flatness of the tube once you flatten it and the space that flatness creates between the tube and the top of your slide on fetish. And let's see if I can get a sound here. So you can get a good sound with this type of fetish. But if you're like me, you prefer a wooden, a more traditional fetish. But the slide-on tends to collect moisture more readily and more quickly than a wooden one. So I'm going to show you how to do a wooden fetish that's just tied on or held on with even a rubber band. And I'm going to be cutting that out of cedar wood, which is a traditional wood for the making of wooden Native American flutes. Okay, we've got the fetish cut out, the rough cut. Now I'm going to shape it a little bit. Okay, after you've got uh, your fetish shaped the way you want it, and sand it down and everything, then you can create the channel on the bottom. And this you can use all kinds of wood, from hardwoods to softwoods. I prefer pine and cedar, the traditional red cedar for Native American flutes. Determine how long your channel will be by measuring from the back of the sound hall to the back of the air hall and marking on your fetish. And that will be the beginning of the channel going toward the air hole. It should be a quarter inch width, and to do that, I use a quarter inch wide wood chisel. At the mark that I made for the back, for the beginning of the air, air channel, I make an indentation with the chisel. Now, from to make sure that I chisel out the wood properly, making a channel rather than going off the edge of one side or the other, I make a mark in the middle of that indentation and from each side, I, ma I make sure that I, from that mark, I measure one eighth of an inch on either side of that mark, and that'll give me a quarter inch width. And on that mark, I draw the channel that will be carved out, and then make indentations all the way down to give the chisel a guideline and make the wood come up, and make the wood chisel up appropriately instead of veering off to the side. Now, 
For the depth, it should be about 1 16th of an inch, sometimes a little deeper, sometimes a little shallower. The depth itself will be determined by the sound of your instrument. No matter how precise you are, each instrument tends to be a little different from the one prior, so you need to make adjustments to get the best sound from your instrument. Using 1 16th inch hobby wood, which you can buy at most hobby stores, it's very thin and it's almost the depth that a channel is supposed to be. What you do is you put, place your fetish on the wood and measure off what you need to cut. Then you take an exacting knife and, and carefully cut this out because this wood being so thin is it will easily easily split and be rendered uh, unusable. Okay, once you have that cut out, then you want to cut the channel. So you, set, again, you set your fetish on the wood and set it, offset it to the back a little bit so you can cut a channel that's approximately one quarter inch. Now you've got that marked. Now you want that channel to run up almost to the back of the fetish. So you'll mark it here, and again, be very careful, because this is where the wood will really split. Repeatedly make cut, but using a light pressure until you get through the wood here. And then from that cut, you go down to these cuts. Again, make very light cut, very light cut, all the way down, and again, and again. And this way, you're not forcing the wood to split. You're actually cutting the wood, and therefore, it's not going to spread and split all the way up, let's hope. Okay, we got that one. Let's do this side. Okay, looks like we've got it. Now comes the part where you either get angry or you are successful. I think. Hold on here. Okay, yes, we've got it. And you lift the middle part, if you can, up from between those two side parts. And pull it on out. There we go. And then clean up a little bit, if, if it's badly. And there, you've got your channel. Now what you do is glue it onto the bottom using wood glue. Just a little bit of do. And that's more than a little bit. So you can take a junk piece of wood and spread it. You don't have to worry about it so much getting into the channel part of the bottom because you're going to be cleaning it up with um, fine grade sandpaper anyway. Now you put on the channel. Match the channel up with the back. Allow that to dry while you move on to making the flute itself. Now, the next step is to flatten this top just a little bit so our fetish, which is drying up quite nicely here, will sit flat on top and can channel the air from this hole to this hole through this channel right here. 
For this part, you need a sanding block, just a little piece of block of wood like that. And you can do this various methods. You can even use a, a large file, a metal file if you want. But this is the, one of the easiest ways I've found. Get a block like this, wrap some sanding paper around it, and that way you can hold it and get a nice even sanding. Now don't go way down here and way up here. All you need to do is from about here to here. About a half inch on either side of the holes. And what you're trying to do is just flatten out the top a bit. So the fetish will sit flat on the top. I'm using a fine grain sandpaper, so this takes a little longer than if you used a coarse grain. We have now got a sort of flat area on top, flat enough that our fetish will sit flat on top. Now, before I do anything else, we want to clean up the fetish, as you can see. It's, it's not very smooth under there. We want to get it smooth and clean. And on the sides, you have bleed over of the hobby wood from the fetish itself. We want to sand all of that nice and even. So it, aesthetically, it looks kind of good. And on the bottom, it works well. So let's put the flute aside for a minute as we got that out of the way. And we'll go ahead and get this all sanded on the sides first and everything, and then clean up the bottom. Okay, once you've got the sides and all nice cleaned up and you've got it sanded down and everything, turn it over and with a uh, fine, fine sandpaper, fine grade sandpaper, clean up the channel. You tear off a little piece, you fold it up so you can work it into that channel. Now don't do it hard so that you hollow out the channel even more. What you're doing is cleaning up the excess dried glue and evening out the channel so the, the air flows evenly rather than over bumps and making it turbulent. Once you've got the bottom cleaned up pretty well, you can test the flute. And you just, all you need to do is set it on there. You see how it channels the air there? Set it on, line it up, and see what you get. And if you get a note, that's good. And I got a note here, and let's see what, what it is. And this is uh, something you definitely need in uh, making a flute, a tuner, because you have to tune each individual hole. And let's see what this key registers now. Okay, the... It's blowing very easily, too easily, uh, and it's easy to overblow. So we're going to have to adjust the top a little bit here by sanding it a little more. And perhaps the um, fetish as well, the bottom, by sanding it down a little bit to lessen the air flow underneath. But so far it's showing that we have an F flute. So we want an F sharp. That means I'll be, we'll have to take a little bit off the length of the sound chamber. And uh, no, we're not going to take an inch at a time because sound changes very rapidly with very little removal. So we'll take it probably about an eighth of an inch at a time. OK, so we've got this nice and smoothed out here and flat and uh, the fetish all ready to go. And we sit it on, and we have nice clear tone and this is uh, registering as an F right now as you can see here a little on the sharp side of F but we want this clearly as an F sharp so we're gonna have to shorten the length a little bit and I don't want to hold this like this all the time so I've got a rubber band and rubber band is great for holding these on while you're in the building process Afterward, of course, you can tie it on with leather, leather or uh, string, whatever you, you can leave a rubber band on if you want, whatever you choose. But rubber band for 
building purposes, works great. So I get it on there nice and stick right in. There we go. So the first order of business is get this up to an F sharp. And then we can start drilling the finger holes. So the first thing I want to do is remove about an eighth to a quarter of an inch, probably an eighth of an inch since this is so close to F sharp already. So Okay, so now I've removed about an eighth of an inch from the endless test to see where it's going. So it has come up to F sharp range. It's on the low side of F sharp. So we want to still bring it up just a little bit more. We're going to bring it up to where it's on zero there. So I'll just need to remove probably about that much again. Okay, we've shortened it one more time. Let's uh, check out, see if we've got it up to F sharp now. Very close, very close. So just a little bit more. But instead of sawing it off this time, I'm going to use a file. So I can just shave off a little bit at a time. Let's uh, see what we got here. Very good. We got an F sharp flute here now, and now it's time to time to uh, put in the finger holes down for the first hole, and I'm going to fill in. And again, I'm going to make this very small. If I make it too big, it could end up sharp, and there's no way to go back from sharp. But if it's flat, you can always sharpen it, and that's that's what you do, is you sharpen it. So we've got about an eighth of an inch hole here. And this, since this is an F sharp, this hole should be an A. So let's see where we where we are with it. G sharp, we're, we're very close. So all I have to do now is bring this hole up. In other words, make it rounder. And I do that with a rounded back needle file. And this is the most tedious part of making a flute is getting the holes, getting the tuning right. But this is what makes the flute sound so good. So we've got a little bit bigger here. Let's see how close we are now. It's not much bigger yet, but we don't, we don't want to do a lot each time. We're going to do a little and check each time. Getting close. So we'll bring it up and I'll be back in a second. Okay, we've got it on A now, so I'm going to put five more holes in here. And then we'll come back uh, and you can see how I've done it each time. Okay. So I need to mark for the hole placement now and I'll put those holes in. Just as I did with this first one. So now we've got all the finger holes in, and let's take a uh, listen to see how, how it sounds like this. Not bad. I think how it's going to sound when we get it cleaned up and everything nice and even and all the chinks and everything sanded out. So let's, uh, first of all, I'm going to take some fine sandpaper like this, roll it up into a cylinder shape so I can get it down into these holes. As you can see, they're ragged. And what I want to do is clean them up so they have a nice clean sound. When things are ragged, it causes air turbulence and air turbulence deteriorates the sound. So we clean them up so the air flows more evenly and um, it has a cleaner sound. So I'll get to doing that. And then after we clean them up and sand off the ends, sand off the hard edges on the ends and everything. Take it inside and wash it. Wash all this uh, 
lettering off and you'll have a nice clean pipe that you can decorate any way you want with paints, with feathers, with whatever you like. That's the beauty of PVC and it'll last forever unless you run over it with your pickup truck or your car or whatever. So here we go, let's get these all cleaned up. Okay, so we've got it all cleaned up now. It looks pretty good. It's just a white piece of plastic with holes in it and a piece of wood sitting on top and a cork inside. But it sounds, looks and sounds pretty good. Thanks very much for watching the video today. The techniques that I discussed are the basic techniques needed for making Native American flutes. I hope that the one that you make, if you use this video, uh, sounds good and lasts you for years to come. If you have any questions at all, please email me in the link below, from the link below. And if you have a desire to learn more. There are more videos on YouTube by other craftsmen, plus I have two books out on the subject on how to make as well as the history of the Native American flute. You can determine a method of calculating hole placement for any size flute using any material, bamboo, wood, whatever. In, in my books, I go into how to make those calculations that work for any diameter and their basic calculations, you don't need to know trigonometry or calculus to do them. It's basic adding and division and, and multiplication. These are some of the flutes that I have made using those very basic calculations. Everything from low PVC to high PVC. to more modern configurations such as the drone. Now, this is very soft voice instrument. It's a very simple method of making and it works for any size with minor adjustments occasionally. For the most part, those adjustments are never needed. There will be information at the end of this video about the books, but you can also find a lot more helpful videos on YouTube by other craftsmen, and I hope that you'll be able to make the flute that you want and save yourself a lot of money and have a lot of satisfaction in doing it yourself, getting that sound. Again, if you have any questions or advice, please email me at the link below. Thanks very much for watching. Once again, thanks a lot. Bye.